After watching the following lecture, students will be able to define enthalpy and its relationship to heat um, under constant pressure conditions. Students will also be able to identify a chemical reaction um, as either exo or endothermic based on um, enthalpic values. And students will be able to calculate enthalpy um, or heat values for specific reactions um, when provided with specific appropriate variables. So enthalpy, um, which is represented by the letter H, is a combination of the state functions energy, pressure, and volume. And enthalpy can be represented by this equation here. So enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus the product of pressure and volume. Okay, so if we want to look at the change in enthalpy, which is something that we'll be uh, observing and, and analyzing very frequently in chemistry, uh, we're going to go ahead and utilize this equation here. So change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy plus the change in our product of our pressure and volume. Okay. Now, so since energy, um, pressure, and volume are all state functions, enthalpy by default is also a state function. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at enthalpy with respect to two conditions. We're going to be looking at constant pressure um, and constant volume conditions. Okay, and so let's go ahead and let's see how um, enthalpy is related to our variable Q or the heat um, in the various conditions that we've discussed. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this back to our change in internal energy equation. Okay, and we're we're also going to look at um, our work uh, being um, only pressure and volume allowed. So we're going to look at um, the um, relationship that we see here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's plug in our um, work variable um, and go ahead and substitute that pressure volume work um, variable. Let's go ahead and solve for Q. Okay, so we end up with the following equation. We go ahead and we look at this equation um, and what Q is equal to. Um, it actually shows up um, and is exactly the same as what our enthalpy value is. Now remember this is at constant um, pressure. Okay, so really this delta value um, only applies to our uh, delta V or volume uh, variable. Okay, so we end up with what delta H is equal to being exactly the same as what Q is equal to. So at constant pressure, okay, our delta H, our enthalpy change is going to be equal to our heat. Um, and so this is a very useful uh, relationship when you're dealing with constant pressure conditions. And in chemistry, basically, probably 99% of the chem that you do is going to be at constant pressure conditions. So this relationship between enthalpy and um, your heat transfer or your heat um, that is either absorbed or released by uh, your reaction, um, they are going to be equal to one another. So if we go ahead and we take a look at constant volume conditions, um, if we were to go ahead and once again utilize our um, equations that we see up here, we would get that Q is equal to um, delta E plus P times delta V. Okay, now in this situation, constant volume conditions, basically your the volume of your container is not going to be uh, being altered through the process. What that means is that I have no change in V. So change in V in this constant volume condition is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so if we go ahead and we take that zero value for our change in V, okay, and we plug it in, what that end up, ends up doing is basically canceling out um, our pressure volume work variable. Okay, so and that leaves us with delta E being equal to Q. Okay, so in constant pressure conditions, or excuse me, constant volume conditions, um, Q is going to be equal to delta E, not delta H. So um, the reality of it is, is these type, this type of relationship doesn't come up very often. Um, we'll see in the future uh, the concept of bomb calorimetry. Um, bomb calorimetry is when this relationship is going to be utilized, and when I mention it, you'll already know why. Okay, and at constant pressure conditions, enthalpy is related to Q as such. Now, one of the main reasons why we want to relate um, our um, energy changes and such 
uh, to Q is because Q is a very easily measurable um, variable in chemical reactions. And we will see that uh, when we have our calorimetry discussion. So for chemical reactions, um, the delta H, or the change in enthalpy, is going to be directly related to the difference between the enthalpy of your products and your reactants. So in a situation where your enthalpy of your products is greater than the enthalpy of your reactants, you're going to have a delta H that's going to have a positive value. Conversely, um, if you have um, products that have a uh, smaller enthalpy, than the reactants, you're going to end up with a negative um, delta H value or no, negative um, change in enthalpy. Okay, so um, this directly corresponds to um, constant pressure uh, situations um, in the sense that at constant pressure, so pretty much any type of reaction you're going to be carrying out in most chemistry classes, um, your delta H, remember, um, is going to correspond directly to Q. Okay, so a negative delta H is therefore going to give you an exothermic process. A positive delta H is going to give you an endothermic process. Okay, so this generic equation um, relates your products and reactants to give you your overall change in enthalpy. Now, the delta H value that we just discussed brings us to a more specific situation when we're referring to the delta H of the reaction, or Rxn, as you're seeing here. Okay, the delta H of your reaction, or your enthalpy of your reaction, is an enthalpy change that accompanies a specific reaction. Okay, and these uh, specific reactions are represented by thermochemical equations. Um, these equations are specific balanced chemical equations that show a specific enthalpy change for specific molar amounts. Okay, so if we look at this equation right here, um, basically we have the combustion of methane um, into gaseous CO2 and liquid water. And the enthalpy ch change associated with that process is seen here. Okay, so we can derive a lot of information from this specific reaction. Okay, we know that this is an exothermic reaction because of the negative sign. We know the quantity of energy that has been uh, released because we've been provided with a numerical value with units. Okay, and what you need to understand about these thermochemical equations is that um, they are directly related to the quantities um, that are present here as well as the specific states of matter and the direction of the reaction that's being carried out. So if we were to look at this equation, um, the way we could describe the enthalpy value is that for every one mole of methane, you produce, or this reaction, this thermochemical equation, would produce negative 890.4 kilojoules. Okay, now if we were to adjust this reaction, um, increase the quantities or decrease the quantities, um, this enthalpy value would change correspondingly. And we'll discuss that in more detail a little later. Now, what I want you guys to understand about this equation up here is that we will be coming back to it and using it in very specific ways. Um, but for right now, we're just looking at this in a generic sense, in that the um, products and reactants differences are what are creating or what is providing us this delta H value. So let's go ahead and put the use of our thermochemical equation and our enthalpy value associated with it into practice. Um, for solving actual problems. So they tell us here, they ask us here, how much heat is evolved when 266 grams of white phosphorus, which is represented as P4, burn in air? Um, so they've given us a thermochemical equation. Notice that uh, the white phosphorus is burning in the presence of oxygen to give us P4O10. And they've given us an enthalpy value associated with that. So if I look at my balanced equation, and my enthalpy value, I can establish the relationship between enthalpy and P4. Because that's the substance they're asking about. So I know that I have one mole of P4 for the release of this enthalpy. So um, I have negative 3013 kilojoules for every one mole of P4. So this is my conversion factor. Now, they gave us, or they asked this question with respect to 266 grams of white phosphorus. So, really, I know how many grams of this white phosphorus I have. 
Um, but the conversion factor is not with respect to grams of P4, it's respect, with respect to moles of P4. So I need to make those units match. So in order to go from grams of white phosphorus to moles of white phosphorus, I'm going to divide by uh, the molar mass. So that's what I've done here, so that's my first step. Okay, and then in order to go from moles of P4 into kilojoules of P4, I'm going to use the conversion factor that I established from the thermochemical equation, which is this one right here. So, 266 um, grams of P4 times 1 mole divided by 123.9 grams of P4 times 3,013 kilojoules um, divided by um, 1 mole of P4. Okay, that's going to give me 6,470. Now if I do a unit of evaluation, grams of P4 and grams of P4 cancel, moles of P4 and moles of P4 cancel, and kilojoules are what we have left over. So, <clears throat> when I have 266 grams of white phosphorus and burn it in the presence of air, according to this thermal chemical equation, 6,470 kilojoules of heat are going to be involved. Now remember, um, delta H and Q are directly related to each other. We saw that a few slides back. So this relationship in terms of um, having an enthalpy value but them asking about heat is uh, completely plausible um, and acceptable. So uh, make sure in this type of problem that you're uh, figuring out the uh, conversion factor um, based on the molar amounts of your um, Co uh, coefficients on your chemical equation as well as the enthalpy value. Once you get that, then take the item that you've been given, so in this case we were given white phosphorus, and make sure that it's in the appropriate units in order to um, <clears throat> be converted into the kilojoule value or the joule value, whatever your units are in. So, <clears throat> so the problem that they've given us here um, is when one mole of methane is burned at constant pressure, 890 kilojoules of energy is released as heat. Calculate delta H for a process in which f a 5.8 gram sample of methane is burned at a constant pressure. Okay, so guys, remember that, um, excuse me, delta H um, is equal to Q um, at constant pressure um, systems. So we can use the uh, inner relationship between Q and H um, to figure out or to solve for H. So let's first of all look at what they have given us. They told us that one mole of methane is burned at constant pressure and that 890 kilojoules is released from the burning of that one mole of methane. So when it says energy is released as heat, we know that our Q value is equal to negative 890 kilojoules. Why do we know that? We know that it's negative because the heat is being released. It's exothermic. So Q is leaving the system. Heat is leaving the system. And we know that because we burned exactly one mole in order to get that quantity of heat, we know that the relationship between our heat and our amount of burned methane is as follows. Um, so basically for every um, one mole of CH4, 890 kilojoules of heat are going to be released. So now that we have this relationship, we need to figure out how much of this um, heat is actually going to be released when all we're burning is 5.8 grams of methane. So basically they've given us the information to um, establish our conversion factor. Um, they've given us an information to understand that um, delta H and Q are equal. We understand that. Um, they've given us the information we need to understand that heat is being released so that our, um, our Q value is going to be established as negative. So they've given us a bunch of information. So now we can treat this very much like the previous question um, because we have both our conversion factor um, and our quantity of material we were given. So um, we have uh, 5.8 grams of CH4. Okay, so we need to go from grams of CH4 um, into moles because our conversion factor here between our heat and our 
um, moles of reactant um, by default make us need to be into moles. So in order from to go from grams of CH4 to moles of CH4, we need to divide by the molar mass of CH4, which is 16.0 grams for every um, one mole of CH4. Okay, so now that we have that established, now we can go ahead and plug in our conversion factor down here because um, we'll be in moles of CH4. So I can plug in 890 kilojoules for every one mole of CH4. So we go ahead and we multiply everything across the top, divide by everything um, that's on the bottom, and that's going to give us negative 320 um, in terms of our numerical value. If we go ahead and do a unit evaluation, grams of CH4 cancel, moles of CH4 cancel, and kilojoules is what we have left. So our answer will be kilojoules. So because this is our this is our heat value that's been released, but we know that delta H and, and Q are equal, so delta H is going to be equal to negative 320 kilojoules. Okay. Once again, make sure that you're paying attention to your units, what they've given you. Um, make sure that you establish the conversion factor um, based on what you've been given. Uh, and make sure you're paying attention to signs and things of that sort. Okay, Energy being released and energy flow are going to help you establish and dictate that um, sign of that um, heat flow or energy or any other substance. So make sure you're paying attention to those types of things.